This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, and uh, today we're going to talk about emotions, eh? Feelings. Um, but I, I, more like states, so thinking and, and, and emotive states, because obviously often they're not uh, an individual thing. It's just like, here's an emotion. Usually we have, whether you're aware of it or not, we have an emotion we experience. Then we have thoughts about the emotion, right? And often we have thoughts and that elicits emotion. And so often these things are really, really connected, right? And so I, uh, I want to talk about the idea of positive and negative emotion. Now, today's world, we, we have this idea of negative emotion. And if I say that, what comes up often is a- anxiety, depression, um, fear, grief, things that maybe don't feel as nice um, as, uh, as happiness, excitement, joy, um, love, the other emotions that um, probably feel nicer for most people, right? Uh, I actually just shared a, a small snippet of a TED talk on my, my personal Facebook page um, by Susan Davids, uh, from Susan Davids' TED talk. Um, and one of the th- couple of things she says in there is, being positive has become a new form of moral correctness. And hey, like that's a, a fantastic way to put it because often what we're doing is shaming the so-called, and I say so-called because it's not negative emotion, they're emotion. We... we we're not broken for feeling a, a, an emotion that maybe doesn't feel nice. It's actually pointing at something. It's usually pointing at something else there in the world, and then it's pointing towards our meaning structures about that thing, right? And so often we go, that doesn't make me feel good. You should change that thing out in the world, not realizing that it's actually our meaning structures that are cr- creating and elicit- eliciting that, that, that response in us. And so the powerful thing here is actually going in and learning about, well, why does that bother me, right? One of the biggest things I coach you is someone's like, this person said this thing about me, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, why does it bother you? So it's it's really looking at not what they said or what they did. It's why does it bother me? Because I'm not in control of them. There's only four things in my control, which I've mentioned multiple times before. That's thoughts, feelings, speech, and behavior. And I'm not, none of that is about them. It's about me, right? Or in your case, it's obviously about you. But the difficulty is that we're sort of like saying how good it is to be positive all the time. It's such a positive influence. Usually that person has a great negative shadow. This may be one of the reasons, may be one of the reasons, why we see a lot of comedians struggle and then go down a path where they can't come back from. And it's it's a really dangerous loop. So the idea of being positive all the time is actually really, as I've said before, I keep on saying that, but it's true, negative, about negativity, right? Or so-called negativity. I mean, a lot of the time we, we've, we've judged things to be negative. And so, for example, anxiousness isn't for me and, and what I would usually teach is not a negative emotion. And when we can understand that it's just an emotion rather than trying to label it positive or negative, we can start to actually understand it rather than try and shun it as if it's this bad thing that happens to me, right? Anxiousness is an emotion that I, I elicit within in me uh, based upon meaning structures about things out there in the world. But often then what happens is that I have thoughts about that anxiousness and then I have feelings about my thoughts about the anxiousness and so on and so forth. It's called metastates. If you want to read a book on it, the metastates by Michael Hall. We'll go through and explain that in, in greater detail. But the powerful thing about all this that I want to talk about, um, this this concept of positive and negative emotions, is that when we shame so-called negative emotions... We're then, we're then glorifying positive emotion. What happens though is that it doesn't mean we're always positive. Sometimes we're faking positivity. It's false positivity, right? And the worst type of sadness isn't sadness. Probably isn't even depression. The worst type of sadness, in my opinion, of course, is fake happiness. Because we're pretending we're pretending to be something in the face of everything else. Now, it doesn't mean we can't step back, be objective to whatever's occurring, and look at maybe the positive and negatives that are coming out of that situation, right? Of course. But it's our reaction to something. 
And when we, when we start to label it negative, and we don't want to be that, we don't want to feel this, this so-called negative emotion, what happens is that it forces us to shame ourselves, right? To shun ourselves, to shun this emotion as if we're, if we're, if we're inherently flawed. And then that, that usually makes it worse, just to clarify. It's like, fuck, I'm anxious again. This always happens to me, and it goes that way as if that anxiousness is some sort of negative thing. It's pointing at something. I mean, maybe, maybe we need some support and help to work through that. Maybe some sort of um, professional coach, development coach, psychologist maybe, uh, even a counsellor, so, someone with some sort of training that, that allows us to, to start looking at something in, in a different light had we want to, right? The key thing is how we want to. It goes back onto Gorge Goodriff's um, famous quote, which is the last thing people will let go of is their suffering. Sometimes that suffering gives us meaning. And that sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. Sometimes our suffering does give us meaning. So it's like, why can't I lose weight? Well, it's like, well, in what way is keeping the weight on? What way is that serving you? It's not serving me. How dare you? It's like, well, it fucking has to be, mate. You still got it. What's going on? But if we start to really become honest with ourselves, really become honest with ourselves and ask these questions wanting to know the answer that can free us from the bullshit that, that's around in our minds that's telling us, right? I had this conversation with a client um, in our FYF session here at the gym. So FYF stands for Fuck You Friday. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite sessions to run for multiple reasons, right? It's not just about a big cardio session. I'm not just interested in that. I'm interested in the whole fucking being of that person, Right, and, and watching this person sort of in their head as they're working through it and, and seeing the limiting beliefs that are coming up for them, right? And they're seeing it. Uh, and, and it's like, find out what's true. When you see those things in your workout, and it could be in any area, maybe in business, maybe in, in your career, whatever, in study, and you see these beliefs come up about what's going on for you, this self-talk coming up, question it. Find out what's really true. That's how you break free of it. That's how you move through it. You fucking question it. Because these are old frames that you've potentially carried with you for years. Break free from them by finding out what's really true in that moment, right? And then that's how you really start to lean into your potential. It's not about the negative and positive. It's about taking control, right, of what's within your control. And this is one of the most powerful things that we can do. And so this is why I talk about it. It's not that the coach doesn't do much work. They can point at something, but it's up to the client to see what's there. The, point, the coach will just point where to look. And that's really powerful, right? Really powerful. And so this, this uncomfortableness, this negative emotion is one of the most powerful things we can have. And one of the, one of the quotes that, um, that Susan spoke about uh, in her TED Talk was right at the end of the little two-minute snippet. And she goes, Discomfort is the price of admission to a meaningful life. Now that's fucking powerful. But I mean, if, I, 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 anyone that's done the Enneagram, I only need to type eight, the challenger. I love that sort of stuff, of course. But discomfort is just, it's just a price. I mean, otherwise we're just, we're constantly evading this, this heart, like this full half of our being as if it's bad. It's useful. What is it? What is it pointing to? What is it telling me? Not, not, not the ego in me, Right. What is it telling me? What information is it giving me in form and the process of that, right? It's something going in and it's a form. There's a, there's a line almost, right, of information coming through. What is it telling me? What meaning can I make from this? You know, it's really interesting and this is a little bit left field, but I watched Thor Ragnarok last night, if that's how you pronounce the second word. And in it, um, he, he, right at the end, he, he goes back to Odin, right? It's Thor, the, 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 the god of thunder, it goes back to Odin, the, the god of war. And um, Thor's always been some sort of positive influence, right? And, uh, and Odin sort of said a sentence, and I'm not really sure what the writers were really trying to say with this, but I, I picked up on it, right? He's like, you've always been, you've always seen just half, and he lost, lost like vision in one of his eye. And what he was saying is that it's not about always being positive. It's not always about being liked. It's not always about being nice. We forget all those things. It's about, it's about doing what's required in the moment. Whatever's required from us. And so when we stop shunning the negative side, the shadow part of us, when we integrate it, we become whole. And that's powerful. That's beautiful. That's everything. And at the same time, it's nothing. And on that note, team, I am done. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you found this podcast beneficial, it would mean the world to me. If you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. If you haven't already, then you should totally 
get in on the Facebook group. Um, it is is changing its name, but for right now, um, I haven't changed it. So let's call it the Moo Prep Community on Facebook. Um, otherwise, team, that's me. I'm done. I'm out. Until tomorrow, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. To be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned.